Good morning and good afternoon. Thank you everyone for joining us. A warm welcome from the Web Secretariat. And uh, I am Meral Güzel. I am the Web Women's Empowerment Principal Specialist of UN Women. Uh, the webinar Mentoring to Advance Women's Professional Development is organized by the We Empower G7 team. Uh, we Empower G7 is funded by the European Union and implemented by UN Women and international labor organizations. And before uh, we go over the agenda, and I would like to mention quickly on some house rules. And of course, you know, we are using the Zoom platform um, and this webinar. So we all became very uh, Zoom groups during the pandemic and there is not much explanation, I guess. But first of all, please mute yourself at all time. And secondly, if you have a question during the webinar, uh, please enter it on the chat box and we, we are happy to interact with you. My colleague Osa, uh, she's moderating the chat box and at the end of the webinar, time permitting, of course, and we will try to answer your questions. And uh, first, we, I would like to go over the agenda quickly. And the opening remarks will be given by Jana Schoenfeld. And she's the program manager uh, for foreign policy instrument of the European Commission and at the European Union delegation of the United States in Washington, D.C. We have here today as panelists uh, uh, representatives of three web signatory organizations, Mentor Me uh, from Germany, Global Denton's Law Firm, and Professional Women Network um, International. And we are very excited today to explore uh, their concrete strategies and why and how, I think the most important to within their organizations. And, uh, Again, I'm highlighting those two questions. So now I would like to invite and Jana Schoenfeld, and Program Manager for Foreign Policy Instrument of the European Commission at the EU Delegation of the United States. Jana Schoenfeld joined the EU Delegation to the US uh, in 2019. She has been working for over 15 years on European Union affairs, mostly on EU external relations. Her work experience within the EU institutions include the European Parliament, the European Commission Services for Enlargement and for Development and Cooperation, as well as the EU Executive Agency for Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises. She served as Policy Officer for Development and Climate Change in Brussels. And next to her uh, professional career, she also has pursued voluntary work around the world, and in particular related to youth and the environment. She holds a master's degree in international studies and a BA in European studies. Over to you, Jana. Thank you so much, Meryl. Hi to everybody from all the corners of the world. I see you have joined us. That's wonderful to see. Thank you for being here. Um, as Meryl already said, I work for the uh, European Union delegation to the United States and we are supporting this wonderful program, We Empower. Um, the aim of the program is to promote economic empowerment of women at work through responsible business con uh, conduct, in particular in G7 countries. And we are convening uh, stakeholders in the EU, Canada, Japan and the US. And as you can see now with webinars actually from around the world to exchange knowledge, you know, to exchange experiences, good practices and lessons learned in the context of a changing world of work. We know how important it is in this context to advocate for women's advancement in the workforce. To that end, we encourage implementation of the women's empowerment principles. And mentoring, topic of today's webinar, directly reinforces the fourth We Empower um, principles, principle of promoting women's training and the development of their careers. So today's corporate culture has many untapped opportunities for women. There's a lot of room for development that needs to be explored and acted upon. As we know, women can easily be overlooked when it comes to promotion and career engagement. And this hinders not only their ability to gain recognition and limits their, um, their capacities for development, but also the capacities of the companies to grow and to use their full potential of their staff. So that's why we think mentoring is so important. Mentoring is a key way to help women reach their full potential in the corporate culture. It uplifts them, helps them to identify opportunities for further professional development while sharpening their leadership skills. Effective mentoring can help women expand their networks, advance their careers and earn higher compensations. Developing these programs is a crucial step in supporting the economic empowerment of women. While mentoring is, assists women in their careers, it also benefits the company's performance and it fosters a positive work environment. 
We are all here to encourage and to learn more about the creation of mentoring programs in corporate culture so that more women can have access to those important tools and they can have a sex successful career. That's why I'm grateful for our distinguished speakers here today. And I'm excited to hear from them about uh, their insights and their experiences and lessons learned. For our participants today, I'm thrilled to see that all of you are here and I hope you will be able to take away a lot of learning for yourself and you can transfer it into your personal work environment. I wish all of you a great success in your careers and to all of us a very exciting webinar today. Thank you. Thank you, Jana. Thank you so much for your warm welcome and for being with us today. And uh, as Jana explained, mentoring is an effective way and is an inc increasingly popular way. And even though I guess mentoring has been always there since the beginning of humanity, but we are now giving a name and using that name as a program name. And uh, it, it provides uh, women's employees as an, with an inf in informal opportunity to learn and acquire leadership and management skills. So we have three organizations today that will bring different perspectives on establishing and implementing mentoring programs. Uh, we have MentorMe, uh, an organization that gives mentoring services in Germany. And Dentons, a global law firm who have they have a, they had a mentoring program and uh, crossing all over their organization, and professional women network providing mentoring services for their members. So uh, Carl Hein Karin Heinz is our Hello. first speaker, and uh, the first question I would like to ask to all our uh, speakers: and can you please talk briefly about your experience in setting up? Uh, a successful mentoring program and uh, with the view to advance women's career. And Karin uh, founded the social venture MentorMe alone and without any prior operational knowledge. I want to inform that. Before that, she studied communications in Austria and political management in Washington, DC. She worked internationally in education, politics and development work. And today, MentorMe uh, brings together job seekers and with the work world through individual mentoring, but also practical training and events. So MentorMe grew from 40 mentors in 2015 to over 2,500 mentees and mentors in 2020 and over 140 events uh, per program year. And MentorMe today has partners like Coca-Cola, Ernst & Young, Weber, Shandwick and Deutsche Bundesbank. And Kar Karin Haynes is also a member of the board of the German Association Mentoring. So uh, Karin, because you have worked with, uh, with a huge number of mentees and mentors and organizations and companies. So can you please, first of, first of all, give us an overview of the notion of mentoring? So what is it and what is not? And then we can go maybe to the question, how did you set up this successful program? Over to you. Karin. Yeah, thank you very much, Mara. And let me first say he hello to the world. Basically, I, I scrolled the chat, chat and there are really participants all over the world. And I think that's a fantastic um, um, way to communi communicate, to learn. So, uh, Mara, um, back to your question. I think basically as a core of mentoring is that as a mentee, you learn from someone who is more experienced in, some, in, in an area you lack experience. That's basically mentoring. So there's always, at the one side, someone who knows more, who gives the one person who knows less this advice, insights, feedback, tips, strategies. So basically, that's a little bit about, about mentoring and what it is at the core. Should I tell a little bit more about how, why I set up mentally and why it yeah, became I mean, a successful mentor? Definitely, please, please go on. But also, why do you think today mentoring became such so big and we are hearing about mentoring? Although, the mm. um, well, first a little bit to mentor me. Um, as you said, I founded it five years ago in 2015, and I was one of those 
who um, had several career changes and, and, and steps. I lived in New York, I lived in, in, in Mumbai in India, then I moved uh, to Berlin, to, to Germany. And every time I was at a point in my life where I didn't know anyone. I didn't have insights to certain jobs that I wanted to go in. I didn't know who were the players in, 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 in these countries, in the cities I went to. And Basically, what I lacked was a sparing partner. People who were more experienced, who got that insight, who really helped me to find my place at the job, uh, uh, at the job, basically in a job. And that's um, why uh, moving forward and after finding a job, I thought, you know what? Where's the impact and you, impact that you can put into the, into the world? And that was basically mentoring. And that's um, why, why I found it mentor me. And I think it was just, you know, the right thing at the right time because the need for mentoring, basically, you know, to know the need for knowledge, the need for expertise and the need for exchange is huge. And that's also why, why mentor me became, became, became so successful within the last years. Um, in, in, I think in the United States, it has always been there. It has always been bigger, at least than in Europe. In Europe, a couple of years ago, it was also there, but it was somehow dusty. It was not a sexy tool. I think not a lot of people had mentors. And, and if they had one, they didn't consider, him, consider them as mentors. However, um, famous advocates such as Sheryl Sandberg changed it. And... Um, to focus a little bit on Europe here and especially in Germany, I think one thing really changed it and that was the, the refugee crisis in 2014, 2015. So actually just in the time when I found it meant to me because there were people who just wanted to help, you know, those masses of ref refugees who came to Europe and a lot of people didn't know how they can help. Was it the refugees to help and how so? So basically mentoring was an easy thing they could do because you know they just worked with the things they already had, their own knowledge, their own experience. And I think that was one of the main pushes for mentoring that it became very um, sought after and big on the mentor side. And obviously with the mentors, also the mentees came because you said it before, Mentor Me grew a lot, and I also know a couple of other mentoring programs in Germany and a lot in Europe. And um, the, the expertise on the mentor side is just huge. And that's why, you know, the mentees also came. And that's, that's when it basically became bigger as well in Europe. So the United States is in here, like kind of like a mother, mother country to med mentoring. It has a long tradition. Um, but these days, it's also very big in Europe and in, in, in Germany as well. And it is always woman to woman. Are there mentors or mentees, women and men? Uh, with us, no. With us, not. We um, support female mentees, so the mentees are, are women, because we've just seen that, especially in the job area, mentees, um, and it's scientifically uh, 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 based and there's scientific evidence that women lag behind in the job world. So the mentees with, with, within my program, within in our company, they are, they are female, the mentors are male. And that's something that is very important to me personally, because in most job industries, in most branches, the higher positions are men. It's still the way, and I think it will still be the way for the next couple of years, probably even decades. And that was the reason why we said at Mentor Me, we want to support women, because they lag behind, you know, there's, there are clear data, for example, women who want to um, apply for a job, they apply only if they fulfill all criteria. Women who, uh, 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 when they get pregnant, when they give birth to kids, their career uh, uh, st uh, stops, basically, while men continue their, their career path. Uh, a third example might be that, um, in Germany at least, uh, women who found companies are only 17% of all founders. So basically, not even two uh, of founders from 10 of are, are females. And that's why we said, you know, we have to create a program for women. On the other side, we need men as mentors because first, as I said before, they are in the leading positions, more so than women. And, you know, we have to bring them on board to really make a paradigm change when it's about equal pay, when it's about equal rights in the job area. And that's why we also have men as, as mentors. Thank you so much. We are receiving questions uh, to understand the difference between mentoring and coaching. 
Can you very shortly explain this? Yeah. A classic. You know, um, a mentor, everyone can be a mentor who has more knowledge and insights than his or her mentee. That's a mentor. A coach has certain uses, certain tools. And if a coach is a real coach, he or she also has an education on that. So coaching is also something where you're there as a professional, but you don't give your own opinion. You help your client find his or her own way. A, co a mentor With a mentor, you can put in your own experience, in your own opinion. And there's a huge, therefore, a huge difference between mentor and coach. I personally think mentoring is much more fun than coaching because coaching is limited. You cannot bring yourself into, the co into, in, into your, your client. With mentoring, you can. Yeah, thank you so much. You talk about the, the one who has more knowledge and higher position, mentor, but I am also hearing a lot about the reverse mentoring, which I found fascinating, where uh, young people, the youth is mentoring at the senior positions, or uh, women mentoring men managers and to teach them, you know, to let them know about their perspective. Thank you so much. It was really very insightful. And our next speaker is Romana, and uh, she will give us a corporate perspective. She is the Global Diversity and Inclusion Coordinator at the world's largest law firm, Dentons, and working across many regions to drive inclusion and diversity within the firm and beyond. She's passionate about advancing equity and inclusion for women, and you will feel that, I think, during her chatting, and other histor historically underrepresented populations. And needless to say, she's a qualified uh, uh, U.S. attorney uh, with an LLM in health law and MA in political society. So welcome, Romana. And uh, so please uh, talk us about how Dentons uh, decided to set up this mentoring program to advance women's career within the whole system, the Dentons. And, uh, and how did you succeed that? Over to you, Jana. Romana. Thanks, Morel. So, hi, everyone. My name is Ramona Bruder Schwab, as Morel so kindly said, um, and I am the Global Diversity and Inclusion Coordinator at Dentons, uh, which is the world's largest law firm based on number of lawyers. Um, so, before I dive in, I just do want to set the scene a little bit for what I'm about to talk about in terms of mentoring at Dentons. Um, and that's basically, I just want to give you a quick introduction to what Dentons is and how it's structured. So we have offices in 77 different countries. We have more than 19,000 people working for us and we're growing every day. And we have quite an interesting structure. We're structured as a Swiss Verein, which is a complex legal entity term, um, but basically all you need to know is that it means that every region of Dentons is more or less autonomous in their day-to-day -day running of their part of the firm. And at the same time, we have a global team headed by our global CEO, which supports all of our different regions. And I personally work for the global team. So this differentiation between regional and global at Dentons is important to note uh, because while several of our regions have their own regional mentoring programs, today I will only be speaking about uh, Dentons global mentoring program. So Like you asked, Morel, what's the structure? How did we set up the successful mentoring program? On a global level, we partner with a third-party nonprofit organization called Global Women Connect, or GWC, to deliver our mentoring program. The reason we decided to work with GWC is because their global vision of mentoring aligns perfectly with Denton's own polycentric nature. In this globalized world and with a firm as multinational, multicultural, and multi-experienced as Dentons, we want our people and our women in particular in this context to be empowered to transcend national boundaries with their career goals and their career expectations. Um, as women, I firmly believe our po uh, potential is limitless, it's boundaryless, and we want to nurture that, which is why we have this mentorship program in place. And uh, I guess if you want more information on how it necessarily works, <laughs> I can launch into that. So, and thank basically, you. oh, is my internet cutting out or? <laughs> Do we hear you perfectly? 
Oh, okay, okay. great. Mm -hmm. So basically how it works, our mentorship program with GWC is Dentons will issue a call to action within the firm for women who would be interested in joining the mentorship program with GWC. And then the firm will select a number of these women as mentees, and we will let GWC know who has been selected. GWC then matches Denton's mentees to corporate mentors who GWC has identified. And GWC mentors come from various industries, not necessarily just the legal industry. They come from all over the world, and they can be either women or men. So the mentorship program is therefore truly inclusive in every way. It's cross-sectional, it's cross-regional, and it's gender inclusive, which is awesome. Um, the mentoring program lasts for one full year um, because it's both GWC's and Denton's belief that in order for both parties to get the most out of a mentoring relationship, that relationship needs to be cultivated and nurtured over a, a period of time. Oh, no. And it seems Morel is having internet problems. So I guess I'll just launch into kind of why I think there are certain benefits and why we as a firm believe that there are certain benefits to having this year long mentoring program. Um, basically, it just allows mentee and mentor to really get to know each other and to learn from one another in a co-creative, collaborative way. So once the mentee and mentor are matched, neither Denton's nor GWC really interferes too much in their relationship. Um, and this is because we don't want to be too prescriptive, right? We want the mentor and the mentee to co-develop their most natural way of working, like figuring out between themselves how often they meet, what they want to talk about. Um, at the end of the day, it's really we trust our people to develop a, a mentoring relationship that works best for them. And throughout this year-long mentoring program, GWC GWC acts as a support system for both mentor and mentee, conducting regular check-ins with both. Um, they also, GWC also conducts a survey at both the six-month and 12-month markers to gather data on how this mentorship program is progressing. And to maintain confidentiality, which is super important, GWC doesn't give Dentons all this information that's collected from mentees and mentors. Instead, they give us, as a firm, a general six-month and 12-month overview on where things stand, uh, what the sentiments are regarding the mentorship program, etc. Um, and they do so in a completely anonymized fashion. This is so that we're not aware necessarily which mentee said what or who answered what for the survey questions. At the end of the year-long mentorship program, then, GWC gives our women the chance to be mentors to other women from other companies and organizations that partner with GWC uh, if our women so desire. And this is great because it keeps this wonderful knowledge creation, knowledge sharing cycle uh, continuing in a sustainable fashion. I think Meryl is just getting back. Uh, probably also can uh, take over the moderation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Maral, are you back? I think in, in the absence of morale, I think she will connect. Um, and I, I'm Anna Feld, I'm the, the manager for the We Empower program and also the women's empowerment principles. Uh, I think uh, we can launch over to, and, and we'll have Mar morale coming back to do the questions that uh, were prepared, but I think we can move over to, to the next speaker if you can talk a little bit about your initiatives. Thank you. So, so I think the next speaker would be Susanna. Han, if I'm not mistaken, so welcome. Thank you, Osa. Okay, yeah. no worries. So, thank you. So, can you hear me? <clears throat> yeah, let's, let's move yeah. on with Susanna, and then Raul, you can come back in. We have, in your absence, we have asked Susanna to, to speak. Thank you so much. Can I uh, introduce Susanna? <laughs> yeah, why don't you do that when you have a little bit of a connection, because it's still not a very strong connection. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. So I'll give a very quick introduction for myself. So I'm with PWN Global, which is a 
professional women's network, but also with men as members in many networks now. Um, and our mission is to accelerate gender balanced leadership. And we have uh, local networks in around 30 city networks across 23 countries. <clears throat> We also have a lot of mentoring programs across all of the city networks. And over the last year, I think we've had about 1400 people through the, the mentoring programs. So we have um, some experience in trying to put these together and we rely on the goodwill of the members to volunteer their time. And of course, this year we've all had to move from doing meetings in person to online programs. Um, but I think the, the benefits, as Denton was saying, of, of going externally rather than internally um, can include getting exposure to an external perspective. So different sectors, different industries beyond the company way of thinking only. Um, so it gives you access to a wider company. People may find it easier to speak more freely outside their own company than talking to another employee. In the context of uh, finding female mentors, if you work in an industry that's very male dominated, again, you have access to a much bigger pool um, and you may have access to a different community, becoming part of a different community that perhaps your own company doesn't offer to you. And, and of course, it can be fun to meet other people, work with um, the other volunteers and then connect to the other mentees in the programme. Great, thank you, Susanna. We will see thank you, Susanna. back. Great. Yeah, you, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. I'm so sorry. It's the typical, um, you know, pandemic, Zoom and internet. So uh, let me introduce you first, Susanna and PwC. And Susanna Hahn is the Secretary General of PWN Global. She is also a lawyer by training with a wide experience of public policy, corporate governance and financial regulation. She holds a portfolio of other roles, including trustee of the CBI Retirement Fund, MBA Advisory Board Member at Durham University Business School an advisory member of Professional Women International Brussels, and which is part of the PWN Global. And as president of PWN Brussels, Susanna oversees the mentoring program, opening it up to male mentees in corporate partners. And she has mentored members in Brussels and MBA students as well. And uh, so thank you so much, Susanna. And we will move on to our second round of questions. So we want to focus at this round, what are the key success factors on the design and implementation of the mentoring program. So what were the main challenges? What did you learn? You know, all of the tips that you can give to our participants. Over to you, Karin. So how did you get, for example, this 1,200 volunteer mentors? You, you, you may have many tips to share with us. Um, okay, then uh, uh, um, I start with that first, um, 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 winning mentors. Um, you know, we are not only offering mentoring as one service, we are offering events and training. So per year, we are offering 140 events and trainings. For the mentor side, we allow them to take place in all of our offerings. So not only the mentees, but also the mentors. And more than that, you know, people who come to us as mentors or who want to become mentors, as I said at the beginning, they want to pass on their knowledge. And we give them basically the opportunity to, the, to do that. And... Um, we also give them uh, access to something I, I want to share with you, and that's already my first advice, a community, a community platform. So basically, we from Mentomy, we're not only matching mentees and mentors and bring them together and then let them take off. We are offering a community with about 14 events per month, with an online community room on, on, on different social media sites where they can connect, where they can, can ask each other for, it, for help. Because what we figured out, mentoring, if it's done really very good, it's not only a one-on-one, -on -one, like one mentee with one mentor, but it's like 
asking several people for probably several questions you're having as a mentee. So with Mentor Me, when you are a mentor, you can ask another mentor for guidance. When you are a mentee, you can ask your own mentee, a mentor, but you can also ask others in the community. And I think this is one of the key why we at Mentor Me are very successful in gaining and getting mentors, people who want to share their knowledge. So coming back to your initial uh, question, Meryl, what are the key success uh, factors? I would say good matching. Good matching is a key success factor. Mostly with most uh, firms, I don't know uh, about the others, um, mentees and mentors have to fill out something, have to provide information, what they're looking for, uh, what they can give. And that's also what we are doing if, with Mentor Me with around 45, 50 questions. Um, I would advise as somebody uh, matching many, many, many mentoring teams, over 500 per year. Um, you can do it manually based on this, on this criteria they are giving you up to 20, 30 matching teams. Everything more than that, you need software. You need a software with an, with an, with an um, underlying algorithm to do the math for you if it's, the matching is really good and really well done. So matching is key. Besides that, and um, I would say that's the second success factor, at least it was with meant to me and what I would uh, uh, propose and, and, and tell you, it's like a kind of supervision um, guidance control system. So basically you have to keep the mentoring teams warm that they are really, that, that, that they continue their mentoring uh, um, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, uh, uh, on a yearly basis, because to be honest, we all are busy. Everyone is busy with their private life, with their professional life, so sometimes people forget the power of mentoring. And if you provide something that keeps them on track, that they go back, especially the mentees to the mentors and say, you know what, let's do another mentoring session. Then we enable them to really take on the, the, the power that's, that's behind mentoring and then to really create an impact. So basically, Mara, that's the two advices that I would give, good matching, good matching software probably, and as somehow a, a guiding supervision system that, that, that keeps track um, that the mentees and mentors don't lose um, um, yeah, the momentum of mentoring. Thank you very much, Karin. Thank you so much. And uh, we will move on to Romana. And uh, Romana, can you please give us an example, a specific example of a challenge you encountered when you were designing the program? Sure. And then we can go there, the major success factors. Sure. Um, so like everything, there's going to be some challenges in setting up a program that is this wide reaching and this global as ours and our partnership with GWC. Um, but a huge draw for our mentorship program is that it's so truly inclusive, right? Um, it's cross-sectional, cross-regional and gender inclusive. Now, at the same time, though, it's important that we make all that very clear to the mentees. We don't want to disappoint the mentees who think that they're guaranteed to get a mentor in the same industry as them. Uh, in this case, it would be the legal industry. So because of the cross-sectional nature of this program, the mentees might not necessarily be matched with another lawyer. GWC takes several things into account when matching the mentee and mentor, not just their job role. So one of our mentees could end up being matched with, say, the CFO of a food and beverages company, for example. So therefore, it's important that we make the mentees aware of this, that this could actually happen, um, and that in some cases, they might not receive the specific legal career advice that they might be expecting from their mentor. That being said, however, we did find that when we managed expectations with our mentees, uh, that the potential benefits of having um, a mentor who has different business experience in the mentee uh, outweighed any potential challenges in this regard. Our mentees have actually said multiple times that they've seen it as a huge benefit to them, that they're able to connect with experts in other industries who offer different perspectives and different expertise to their own. Uh, we have a question and Romana, and maybe you are uh, best place to, I mean, I'm sure we all have the measuring, how we are measuring the success, mm -hmm. but what do you use as tool in Dentons to measure the success on your mentoring program? Right. So essentially um, what GWC does is that they, 
they do check-ins, regular check-ins with the different, with the mentors, with the mentees. And what they also do is they do six month uh, and 12 month marker anonymized surveys. Um, so these are surveys that are sent out to both mentees and mentors. They ask the same questions of both the mentee and the mentor. Um, they ask questions like, you know, uh, do you feel inspired um, when you're with your mentor? Does your mentor help you with problem solving? Have you learned new skills? Um, and similarly of the mentor, it asks, have you learned something new? Do you have um, a good dynamic relationship with your mentee? They're questions like that. They change yearly. Um, it's really up to GWC what they ask, but it's great because that gives us data and we can collect that data to then actually hone this program better in the future. Um, and GWC, uh, what I was saying before kind of about the anonymized nature of it and the whole importance of confidentiality um, comes into play here because GWC will share these results with Dentons, but it's completely anonymized. GWC doesn't tell us, oh, uh, Suzanne, uh, your mentee Suzanne said this. No, it's completely anonymized so that we only have the specific data points. And I think that's great because it allows the mentees to be their authentic selves with their mentors, right? They don't have this feeling that, you know, Dentons as a firm is looking over them and, and they don't have this feeling of needing to impress um, a potential, you know, uh, boss in the future because their mentors are from other industries. They're from other organizations. Uh, and the survey, as mentioned, is completely confidential. So I hope that answers that question. Thank you so much. Definitely, anonymity and confidentiality are the success keys. And um, I would like to invite Virginie, and she is also from PWN, Virginie Martin de Nobrega and to talk about the key success factors. And she is the senior international um, affairs for international organizations. She has a strong interest for human rights, the SDGs, and, uh, and she really wants to adapt that and for a business and human rights approach. And um, as a board mem member of PWN Global, she leads the strategy of the chapters and 3,200 members. And since June 2019, she held the position of Vice President Strategy in the global not-for-profit PWN and Global. So uh, Virginia, over to you. And can you please specify and talk us specifically, what are the key success factors of your mentoring program? Yes, thank you, Mirab. Thank you. Uh, thank you for all the insights. I think PWN has a bit of the role of GWC for Romana. Uh, and we also act as global. So we have between 28 and 32 chapters across Europe, but also in Africa and South America, and they all run their mentoring program. But we do have common key uh, factors of success. And I would say one of those is managing expectation. As Karin was saying is, what are you looking for? Are you looking for mentoring? Are you looking for coaching? And what kind of approach the network is using? Uh, as Romana was saying, we are trying to match as much as possible people uh, according to their needs and not specifically according to the sector. So you can be matched with someone outside your sector, but it does provide you additional value because you have another perspective on how other sectors operate and what can you bring into your own sector. So really managing expectation is, I would say, uh, the first key success factor. The second uh, key success factor will be preparation and adaptation. So certainly matching is key. At the beginning, you want to know what the mentee wants and what the mentor is ready to offer and commit in terms of time and in terms of experience. But you also want to be adaptable. During the journey of mentoring, you can realize that some mentees and mentors are not the right fit. And therefore, it's okay. You need to accept that uh, relationship evolve. And sometimes matching is not precisely what the mentors or the mentees were expecting. And so you should be able to, again, rematch them, adapt them, debrief with them and try to move forward uh, and move on. So I would say adaptation certainly is another key success. And then process design. Try to anticipate uh, in advance and beforehand what will be your mentoring journey. Try to sequence it. As Romana was saying, uh, she has a review after six months and 12 months. 
most of our mentoring program, they do have a review process after uh, seven months and at the end of the mentoring program. And as Romana was saying also, within PWN uh, in general, we have a mentoring program around six months minimum because we think that the relationship needs to last a minimum of six months to really be of added value to the, the mentors and the mentees. You also would like to bring, and I think that's also something that was mentioned uh, by Romana, you want to bring clarity on the process. So people, even though it's quite flexible in the relationship with their mentors, they still have a process and guidelines on how the mentoring program is going to be um, developed, what you're going to gain from it, and how you're going to gain from it, and what will be the key milestone through your journey of mentoring. So it gives a bit a sense of security to the mentee who is completely in, out of the blue in this relationship with the mentors, and this is key. I also think that you always need to time of reflection after each wave of mentoring. So what did we learn through this mentoring program? What can we improve? How can we do better the next time? And hearing both from the mentors and the mentees is key. Because sometimes when you do organize mentoring program, you do have some blind sides and you don't always can put yourself in the shoes of the mentees. You try to, to, bet, to give the best offer possible, but it's not always easy. So really debrief with the mentors after, afterwards, debrief with the mentees, try to see how you can enhance the journey of the mentoring program. Something also, which is the last key success factors that I would like to underline here is bring a community of mentees because yes, you gain value from your mentor, but you also gain value from your other mentees. You create a community with like men and women or men who are in the same situation, who are in a stage in the career where they want to evolve, they want to thrive and to grow. And so try, and we are trying uh, in our, each of our mentoring program within PWN to really have like uh, WhatsApp groups, but also lunches, dinners, uh, brainstorming session so they can build their own community within PWN. So that's the uh, five or six key success factors uh, that I will um, highly recommend when you launch or when you want to join a mentoring program. Yeah, thank you Virginie. You can also quickly please talk about what are the best tools, how you are measuring your results. Okay, so we have, uh, so as I think Susanna also mentioned, so just for 2020, uh, to give you a bit of figures, uh, we have 471 matches between mentors and mentees, and an overall rate of satisfaction of 80-85%. So what we do is a survey. Uh, we try to see whether they were satisfied by the mentors, the regularity of the meetings, the commitment of the mentors, if they had insight, whether in books recommendation, articles, and how did they linked with the community and how did they link what they learned during the, mentor, the mentoring to their experience within, uh, within, within the corporation. Because you want mentoring to really give you tools to adapt and to practice into your daily life. And that's how we measure so far uh, the success of our women or male mentees within PWN. Thank you very much, Virginie. And lastly, I would like to ask to all our panelists, speakers. So, uh, how, which benefits you saw at the change of the corporate culture, which is the most difficult uh, target to achieve? And uh, what mentoring brought to your companies or the companies you work? So, Karin, can you exactly talk to about us? So, what do you offer and what, what, which impact do you see on the mentees and on the mentors? Thank you, Karin. Over to you. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Um, first, on the companies, I would like to start with that. Well, basically, um, what we are offering, to explain it a little bit uh, before I answer the question, is we are offering companies access to talented job-seeking women. We do it for mentoring. So um, uh, companies can come to us and say, you know what, we want to uh, 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 um, give our employees the, the, the chance to become mentors. So they become mentors on behalf of their companies, looking, guiding uh, uh, young, talented women. Best case scenario would be a takeover of these women as employees. Another way of our uh, cooperations with companies is when companies want to um, uh, enable, empower, support their own female employees. So these employees become mentees within ment Mentomy and they can get mentoring and the training and the, the networking. So the whole full mentee package. Um, as a third uh, area, uh, corporations come to us when they just want to, you know, increase their brand, their image as an uh, innovative company, as a company who, who opens the doors 
to stakeholders who opens the doors uh, to uh, female future employees. And so they are um, basically they are sponsoring our events. And they are, you know, giving their firm stamp on our events and say, you know what, that's us. For example, yesterday I had a big event with Ernst Young, a big um, consulting company, and the, the event was an evening with women bosses. So they basically sponsored it, they paid for it, and the 200 participants who were at the event know this company, Ernst Young, is a very nice company to work with because they are doing more than the normals. They are investing in, 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 in the females uh, to really um, find their own, own, own job purpose. So that's a little bit about the corporations and what they get. So basically, uh, access to talent, image increase, um, the ability to invest in corporate social responsibility, in diversity, um, to open the own doors to those out there, especially during the war of talent. Corona put a little bit of aside, Corona <laughs> did a hold on that, I think, on recruiting. But uh, when Corona wants a scan, we again will have a war on talents. And then companies have to make sure to offer something and more than the others to really be visible to those who seek jobs. On the mentee side, yeah, as, as, as the others before, we are also evaluating, we are sending out emails, we are sending out surveys. Uh, we are doing a monthly short survey where we basically ask um, how, is your, how, how big is your network, how big is your, or how, where is your position, your job position on the career ladder, and how, uh, how would you rate your confidence. And our goal is over time that you really see an impact with the help of the mentoring in our program that all of these increase because that's basically why the women come to us. On the mentor's tour side, I can give you a couple of facts because we are also surveying them. And on the mentor side, um, uh, um, it's that 95% of the mentors felt that they get appreciation and more appreciation when they became mentors than before. 90% said that they uh, are more content with the job. And basically it's clear because their mentees somehow want to go into their areas or they want to, to work what they are now working. So it gives them also, you know, a, like a kind of a, a boost within their own manage. And, and that's, I think, interesting, 75% felt healthier at work with mentoring. And I think that goes hand in hand with just uh, feeling more happy, feeling more uh, that, they, that they, they, they share something with some other human, that they help, they support another human. So um, Meryl, that's a little bit about the impact that mentoring is, or mentoring in general is creating on mentors, on mentees, but also within and for companies. Thank you so much, Karin. Actually, when you talk about Corona, and I would like to direct the same question to, to Romana as a global law firm with their program overseas. So how, uh, what are the benefits, of course, of your mentoring, mentoring program, but how this pandemic uh, affected your mentoring program for good, for bad? Uh, can you please talk about that to us, Romana? Thank you. Sure. Sure. Thanks, Morel. And um, Karin, I just wanted to say, I think the stats that you referenced um, with regards to mental health in the workplace um, on the part of mentors was super interesting and not something I've necessarily uh, heard before or come across before. So I'll be referencing that in the future. Um, so back to your question, Morel. We've been living in extraordinary circumstances for the past year. Um, that's maybe a bit of an understatement even. Uh, many of us have felt isolated, overworked, and uh, probably at times quite helpless in our respective situations. Um, so I think specifically this year, the benefits of having this cross-regional and cross-sectional mentorship program were visible more than ever. Um, we found on the six-month anonymous survey that GWC conducted that several mentees specifically stated that having someone to connect with regularly who can offer personal and professional guidance and who serves as a sounding board for their thoughts, their feelings, and ideas, all from a perspective different to their own, was so, so beneficial to them, particularly during these tumultuous times. Um, the mentees also said that it was comforting to know that other people in other parts of the world, uh, in other industries, were, you know, in some cases, going through the same things as they are. Um, so 
that's definitely a benefit that we've seen come out of our mentorship program that's specifically contextualized to the coronavirus pandemic. Um, some more general benefits that the mentoring program has brought to Dentons um, include this global networking, this global connections and relationship building, um, all of which I mentioned previously. And then on the other side of the same coin, we also have the concrete benefits of skills enhancement and skill building that participating in such a program offers. Um, again, referencing the anonymous six-month survey conducted by GWC, one of our mentees said that her mentor was supporting her in focusing on her leadership goals and on honing her management skills um, because she was actually new to a senior management role in the firm. Um, and yet another mentee said that her mentor was advising her on strategic relationship building in the workplace to help her focus better on meeting client demands. Um, and the aim in this, of course, was to build customer satisfaction that would then lead to repeat business, both for the mentee and ultimately for Dentons. Um, so from these two short anecdotes uh, that we got via our data, we can see that our mentorship program with GWC is incredibly beneficial uh, because it drives both personal and professional development for these women in a very unique way. Um, our partnership with GWC offers something to our women that we wouldn't necessarily be able to offer on our own if we were just to set up a global mentorship program that was purely in-house, um, even though there are merits to that as well. Um, and in turn, it also drives innovation and culture change within our firm and positively impacts the services we offer our clients. Of course, of course. Thank you so much. Specifically, I love the personal quotes that you bring from the personal experience of your mentees. And I will return to Virginie, to PWN, to ask the same question. Keeping in mind that PW, I mean, your mentees and mentors are from different sectors, from different countries. So what benefits do you see and, uh, in mentees and mentors? And especially, specifically, do, we, do you have a feedback from them if they have brought some cultural change to the, you know, their employees and to your members and in, in, the, in the companies they work? Thank you, Virginie. Over to you. Thank you, Meryl. Uh, yes, so uh, first, I, I would like also to link with what Romana was saying. I think uh, for corporate partners, because we all also offer that to mentees who are in corporate partners of, uh, of ours, uh, I think there is a shift of culture, definitely, Meryl, because they don't uh, only make a stand for diversity, gender, and inclusiveness, but by one mentee at a time, uh, they change their department culture, their political culture, because one person is an example or is bringing new awareness or new angle of approach to things. And I think it does really reflect on the culture uh, within a company. It does nurture the talents. It does identify the future leaders and it does retain their talent, which is key now. Uh, and what we have seen uh, from some uh, mentees is that they really, uh, and especially I think it's, 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 it's even more vivid for, because you know in PWN, as Susanna said, she introduced to have male mentees mentored by women. And those male mentees, when they go back into the corporation and they are managing women, they are seeing things a bit differently. Uh, and they know how to adapt their management style and they know how to, to be as and be a report for, for them. And we had had very positive feedbacks from male mentees on that. Uh, and from a mentees and mentors perspective, I think all of them agree that it broadens the view. It broadens their view, uh, they think differently, they have a different approach to things, and they are, sometimes they develop a new awareness about what is gender inclusivity, what is uh, inclu inclusion, what is cross-intersectionality, uh, how can I do better in tiny things in my daily management, but also when I stand up for a, team, uh, a teammate of mine, or when I recruit someone, what I am looking for in a CV now. Uh, and so definitely I think um, when you broaden your views uh, and you are linked with a mentor that has that experience and that you're able to absorb that knowledge, not only do you maximize your potential, but you also bring people on board. And that's how the culture, the shift of culture within company is expanding. And as Romana said, this has a domino effect on your clients, on your partners, everyone that you touch uh, base with, basically. So that's uh, our experience within PWN and that's what we're, we are proud of. And, and again, gender is not just about, uh, and diversity is not just about saying it or uh, making uh, a statement. It's about how do you implement that 
in your uh, in your policies, in your management style, in your management tools? What kind of tools do you give to your employees to blossom? Uh, and that's, I think, what mentoring is offering to corporate partners, but also to managers who want to be better in a world that is so diverse today that we can't go around diversity anymore. Thank you very much, Virginie. Thank you so much. And um, thank you very much for all our panelists for their insightful contributions. And uh, for, uh, thank you very much also for our uh, participants and for all those questions. Uh, I could try, I, I tried to insert some of the questions uh, during their uh, talks to our speakers, but there are so many more and we took a note of that. And uh, so uh, we will answer them and post them on our website. And thank you very much to all. And now I'm inviting Anna Fout for the closing remarks. And she's the senior program manager of uh, We Empower G7 program that I mentioned at the very beginning of, uh, of our webinar. And she's the head of the web secretariat. And uh, over to you, Anna. Thank you so much, Moral, and thank you so much, everyone. It's been uh, a very exciting hour. Uh, we've heard from the, the wealth of experience from our speakers and from all the participants that have chimed in and really said what a wonderful experience it is to be part of a mentoring program. So it's, it's been very exciting. And uh, today we are also very excited because we are coming out with a guidance on how to create mentoring programs um, that um, I think also will put the link or has already put the link. Um, and we hope that this will also help you going forward to uh, capture some of, of the lessons learned that we heard today. I mean, the, as, I, as I heard, the, the, the starting point is really the good match. And I think we, we know that uh, from many relationships that uh, the chemistry matters and, and, and the relationship matters. Uh, but we also learned that it doesn't have to be uh, in the same industry, that actually it can add value to bring in diverse perspectives uh, from other industries. And um, I think this is very valuable uh, insights uh, from, from all of you to that it doesn't have to be uh, somebody next door. And it can actually help with confidentiality issues and, and uh, maybe even reputational issues to bring up concerns that you have uh, with somebody in the same company or even in the same industry. So it could actually be helpful to kind of uh, remove that element in, in the relationship to go with somebody in a completely different industry. And, and I think that's um, um, really great to hear. Uh, we're all for, for diversity and, and, uh, and, and promoting that. Um, I think also um, that what I've heard was also really it's it's about the design. You can't just say, oh, here we have a mentorship program and then just kind of launch it out. No, it needs to be nurtured. It needs to be uh, well designed. Uh, make sure that it works regular check ins and uh, not just leave it and think it will take care of itself. Uh, that the mentors and, and the mentees need to be reminded that this is ongoing. And of course, it's a challenge, particularly these days when we are busy and double working uh, and, and, and triple working uh, with all our different responsibilities at work and, and in our private life. So it's, it's particularly important, even though it has probably added value uh, with mentoring programs that uh, can now cross borders more easily because we are getting used to using um, the digital tools uh, to connect and it might not have to be in person and it could be actually through virtual connections, which broadens the scope for an entire world to kind of find that right match. And um, so in, in, in the situation we are, we can see the glimpse of, of uh, successes. Um, and finally, I just uh, want to just make sure that we all are measuring success. Um, as I also heard earlier in a meeting this morning, was we, uh, what happens, uh, we only do what is being measured. Not maybe 100% true, but um, when we know that something will be captured and the successes are what we do, we will aim to really focus on those uh, indicators and make sure that uh, those are being advanced. Um, so measuring success, and we heard from our speakers that success can be uh, perceived in many different levels. It can be from the individual, whether the individual feels more empowered or it maybe even get a, a promotion. 
but also for the company to have insights to talent and and these days uh, to really uh, getting a hands in and understand what are the prospective talent that my company could absorb and and really kind of engage with. Um, finally, I think we uh, we have a poll that is going on. And I'd like just to, uh, at the same time, make sure that uh, everyone has the link to our guidance. It is uh, a bit longer than the other guidance notes that we have put out on other topics because it has um, a series of different tools uh, that we hope can be helpful to you. Um, I'd also like to, um, we can go to the next slide. I'd also like to uh, remind um, everyone of the award that we have ongoing for web signatories based in or with presence in the G7 countries and the European Union. Uh, this follows from the previous award that we had for the Asia, and we also have different award processes going on in, in Latin America. So this specific award is for the G7 and the EU, and the deadline uh, to submit your application is on the 6th of November. This is a screenshot from our website, so please go to webs.org and uh, if you're curious and, and want to know more about the award, you will get all the information there. And what is exciting for us is that we will have a group of young women that will decide the company that they would prefer to work with. Uh, so this is, uh, we leave it up to young women as, as we were saying in this mentoring uh, session that um, the, the access to talent is key and we want to hear from young women what are the what matters to them in terms of getting it right from a company perspective. So we are very excited about that and I think we can go to the next slide. And this is about an upcoming event. Uh, we have the next session. We have um, a session on uh, self-empowerment and self-development. And this one particularly will focus on uh, collaboration and remote working. And uh, it's the next event on 5th of November. It's part of the learning series. We have had previous uh, webinars on confidence building and on, on different technical issues. And this one we think goes right down the alley on, on the COVID-19 working methods of working remotely and how we can be more productive and effective in collaborating with others. Uh, and finally, further down in, in the future, on 10 December, just putting it on our radar, we'll have uh, a longer event uh, that will go on for a few hours, the power of working together. And uh, that's an opportunity for us to show a lot of more resources that we are making available to the community. So I would close there. And thanks to everyone to also have participated in the poll. And finally, um, I would like to thank each of the panelists for your great insights, Karen, Romana, Susanna, uh, Virgin, uh, Virginie, uh, and, but also Jana uh, from the European Union that are with us and, and supporting us uh, from the European Union. And of course, Meral, Osan, and Diana for, for all the support and, and the moderation, both um, in, in, on the video, but also in the chat. And, and thanks to everyone. And I look forward to seeing you on the 5th of November for our next event. Thank you. Thank you very much to all participants and speakers and your time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.